Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today we're going to be getting to part two of two. Uh, yesterday, during part one, we took a look at the main floor of the house with all of my tropical trees, uh, house plants, and succulents. So, uh, not much going on otherwise as far as growth, but I'm going to give you the update on the not cold hardy trees that are chilling out down in the basement for winter. They're in full dormancy, chilling out between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, we did an upgrade to the uh, outdoor winterization uh, section for my cold hardy trees and that I believe is working out very well surrounded by uh, wood bark chips and right now covered in snow so pretty much ideal as far as winter conditions go for those trees. I did miss this plant room we're standing in for an update yesterday so we're going to do that as well. So all three of those things coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, so we have some more plants from Stella's baby shower. Um, this is the second time they're flowering out. I pruned a bunch of them back. It's whatever. It makes Laura happy. <laughs> It'll be fun to tell Stella that's basically her first plants. So from my broski, Matt Brennan in Florida, if you remember, he sent me a bunch of different trees. So these are actually from his neighborhood. This is a strangler fig or, uh, you know, strangle, strangler fig ficus. And I'm really excited to do a root over rock with that, multiple rock actually. And I just uh, defoliated here because all the leaves had died on these. And I believe he said they were, I can't remember, some sort of ficus. And then he might have maybe a tamarind? Beach tamarind. Yeah, beach tamarind from uh, down in Florida in the United States. So I know that one of them has kicked off these new leaves. So that one I believe is good. And the other ones, who knows, they looked a little bit more established. So maybe they're just in a bit of dormancy and they're gonna kick off. They're not like black or falling apart or anything And the, oh, that branch fell off. But I think I'm gonna stay positive on that. And we've got, this is Franny's Jade coming out strong. She wants to have a three trunker. Another one from Matt Brennan under my favorite grow light. And this is a, is a um, pink bougainvillea. So as you see, I've got a lot of new growth. So that one has survived the male and transitioning to Northwest Connecticut. And this is two hibiscus and they have big bright orange flowers. So as you see, new leaves on those as well. So Matt, I didn't do you dirty, buddy. I did your stuff justice. Oh, and the last one, this orange tree, looking nice and healthy. I'll probably let this grow all the way until spring uh, 2023 before I mess with it. This year, I'm just going to let it grow strong. This is slowly becoming one of my favorite jade plantings and plantings in general. So it's in a log style pot. It looks like it's a hollowed out log made out of stone. And I'm trying to do like this little twin tree thing, big tree, little tree, a little turtle. And I don't know, just the way it's filling in and already getting woody, both of them, plants coming together. That These are from uh, my broski, Scott Winard at Let's Do Bonsai. And at first they were actually together. And I thought this, um, the little one here was just a base branch. And I was like, okay, I'll let it thicken up the trunk. And then I was doing a little bit of root work and I realized, oh, they're two separate trees. How cool would that be? And now it's just coming together. Jeez, I better move along. <laughs> this is going to be a three-parter. Okay, so this is my um, Mojo Congo Rojo, Congo Mojo, something like that. Philodendron, it's awesome. Comes out red underneath. See that cool color? Love it. It's with a camouflage tropical plant as well. My olive trees that are planted in Kokodama on top of these little clay things Laura and I made together, they're going to go. I'm going to plant these into some nice pots. I hate Kokodama. <laughs> I'm not trying to, um, this is from our wedding. My plant keeps dying. I've tried like mowing tree cuttings and stuff. Anyways. Um, the Kokodama, you literally have to mess like twice a day or it dries up, and I'm just not into that. Like, <laughs> This is just an office plant rescue. 
like a calla lily or something. Here's my forest planting of Delonyx regia. All of them have buds on them. They're coming out. And those are pruned at the same time as my big boys. So if you saw that yesterday, you could tell this is a cutting of a queen of the night growing well. Sorry about the sun, y'all. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Yeah. Okay, well, I've got some date palms grown from seed right here. They're coming into their own. I pruned off this palm hard. And I know it's going to kick off some beautiful growth starting the season. That's a sago palm just like this one. Some of Stella's baby trees, weeping cherry, and an Okinawan holly, Okinawa, Japan. Spent a year there in the Marine Corps. This was for Laura's great-grandmother. She's 92 up in Boston. We were going to go visit. But with the spike, um, her family didn't feel comfortable taking any visitors. So Grandma B's great-grandma B now will have to um, wait to get her pencil cactus planting. This is my Motley crew here, all from cuttings. Bamboo, got some cacti in there, Italian fig, and Delonyx regia. So if you haven't gotten Delonyx regia to successfully um, live as cuttings, it is possible. That is my only one that I've ever gotten to, though, in four years. I'm trying to get you all a good angle. Okay, so, you know, just some wandering Jew here, other house plants. That Bobab I transplanted the other day. I've got my Twilight chilies. I repotted them off camera another day. Another one of my favorite plantings. This is an avocado with tons, tons of budding. You can't see that. I'm sorry, but I mean, it is all over the place. Yeah, get it where's the angle oh well but basically I want a nice full canopy with lots of branching which is hard with avocados above this black locust which is getting some nice sway in its trunk nice color to it and that's kind of in its own dormancy right there so I want a little canopy big canopy another one of the peppers transplanted baby jade this tree it died last year but it was so cool grown from seed a western redbud that i kept it because even its branching was perfect so it just never came out of dormancy last year so for whatever reason my fault all right so we're downstairs with maples and birches and zelkovas Coastal redwoods, some figs, black locusts. So basically, um, I have them all elevated off the ground so that the roots don't get hit with the cold concrete. So even these are on like really thick gym matting. And they're all in drip trays. So you don't have to water them that often, but I just make sure that they maintain a decent level of moisture so they don't completely dry out over winter. And what's going to be unique this year is a whole bunch of different deciduous trees. Um, this one hasn't even lost its leaves yet, this Japanese maple. But they're crispy. The moss is staying green for me because of the moisture. I've got some of the squash and pumpkins uh, overwintering here. Or this is what we use as a dry cellar and just come down and get them as we need them. Um, that's we picked all those in October, so they've lasted a while. We have them regularly. Okay, sorry. So um, what's gonna, what's going to be different this year is instead of bringing these up in like early February and getting them to bud out indoors to get some early and extra ramification, I'm just going to be putting them outdoors when I know that it's not going to be really hard freezing overnight anymore, um, and I'm going to let them come out of dormancy outdoors because in the past. Um, I like specifically with trident maples, like uh, the leaves burn up and then the new leaves just, it just never looks good again for the season. So I really want them to, now that they're getting developed three, four years of life, I want everything to be able to look its best this year. So we're going to let everything bud out outdoors. Everything's a little more cold hardy, established. It's time. I'm psyched. 
because um, I started pretty much everything from seed. So you really have to be extra careful going indoors to outdoors and dealing with cold and warm temperatures um, with the little seedlings. Now I've got some trees going. I'm feeling more confident in the process, especially where I am in the United States as far as weather pattern goes. So I guess we'll see how that goes. So probably middle of March, these will all be going outside, maybe a little earlier. All right, let's go outside and check out the cold hardy. All right, sun's getting high in the sky in the late morning. You see how cold it's been that there's an icy glaze above the snow. And there's probably only a few inches of snow. Got these guys chilling out out front this year. Second year in this pot. Very cold, hardy tree. Weeping Norwegian spruce. So I was walking around with Laura and Stella yesterday and I really don't even think I'm gonna mess with them this year either. Just kind of let them fill out. I, They look tip top in my opinion. I'm loving the fullness. Got the nice sweep. There's nothing really growing vertically. Might, might get rid of this or I might see if it comes off of here and fills in a gap, you know? Anyways. It was really pretty right after the snowstorm up on all the spruce. There's some blue spruce, white spruce, Norwegian spruce, and then uh, Connecticut white pines. The snow is all up on them, and I did a little photo shoot with Franny. She was running around the yard in a leotard barefoot. Maniac. I mean, it was my idea, but at least she did it. <laughs> so we got a couple more here. This is the last of the Norwegian spruce that is like extreme weep. I need to get it in a different pot and change the angle and work on that one this year. That would be fun. And then this is a blue spruce in rehabilitation. Uh, in my first year of bonsai, I got it and I tried to make it so that it would weep like these. And that's just not the way that thing grows. So it came in extremely ugly and it's in rehabilitation rehabilitation year two so maybe in another year I'll give it some love and get it started towards some beautification so this is my Frazier fur trunks looking nice got the bark piled up high this is planted above the ground huge root ball in burlap Yeah, it's gonna get a nice hard pruning this year. I've let it grow uh, for two years now. I've got a really hard pruning. Um, well, actually, I, I pruned the apex this year. So there was some extreme vertical growth that I took out, but the year before I really thinned it out a lot. Over here, we have some of my pre bonsais. This is Rose of Sharon. It's getting nice and branchy. This is actually a twin trunk. One, one tree, got a couple more. And then here I believe is a hickory, some nice strong buds. So I'll probably prune them up early spring. And here we go. This is the upgraded outdoor winterization section on my left and on my right. As you see, I've got all the trees where the gutter won't, gutter won't cover them. So the plan worked well there. So they're all covered in snow. And when it's not snow, if it's rain, it's warmer. Good, if there's a dry period, you know, I'll water them, that's fine. But I, I don't anticipate having to. And then we got all my pines, duzhas, some of the older, like that's a hickory in a larger pot. It's a blueberry larger pot. Some Japanese black pines. More duja. Really had a lot of fun this year, really starting to establish plant things. Up until this point, for the most part, especially on my evergreens, because they grow so slowly in the beginning, it was basically just nursery pots and water and watch. And now, you know, everything's kind of coming into its own. So totally worth the wait. So if you're just getting into bonsai, I will be hitting my fourth year, finishing my fourth year, uh, February 16th and starting from seed 
a ton of trees. Um, well worth it, but it, it does take a while. So enjoy the process. Don't rush it. And definitely try a bunch of different varieties and species because they all grow at different speeds. If you only do, say, junipers or one of the more popular evergreens, you're not going to have much to do and you might lose interest. So these are seven of my 375 white spruce trees for my tree farm. And I have 50 more there. And then the other ones are chilling out in the veggie and fruit garden. And you all remember Carl. So before I run out of space on this one too, I want to wish you all a happy end of your week. Have a great weekend. And hopefully you're in a place warmer than I am because as beautiful as this is, I do not enjoy the cold. <laughs> so I'm Jared Paul for the ranch. Uh, take care, y'all. Cheers.